We're here with the Brother Side Podcast, episode 16. I'm Alex. I'm Justin. And today we have the guest of February. We the, know we know her a little bit. The guest of all guests, really. It's like uh, you got Oprah, you got Michelle Obama, yes. you got Madonna, and you got Aaron Pearson. It's Aaron kind of Pearson. All in the same category. If you can ask I get me. a one namer though? Can I just be Aaron? Uh, I think you still got work to do oh, before we get right. there. Yeah. All right. Family member, indeed. This yeah. is what everybody wanted. It's like, yeah. get a wife on, see what the mm-hmm. wife is like on a podcast. Mm-hmm. Here she is. She's the president of Center Sphere. Welcome, Aaron. Hey, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yes. I uh, first have to say, is I apologize to our listeners, all millions of them. Yep. We've had a delay in our podcast because I had COVID and I survived, and that's why we haven't had one. But we're excited to have Aaron today, a farm girl from Pleasantdale, Nebraska. What? People- before we get to Farm Girl, let's talk about the beer of choice. I always forget this. You story. always forget the beer of choice. What's the beer of choice, even though this isn't, really isn't true, to, in my opinion? Um, we are drinking Vanilla Bean Blonde today. Shout out to Infusion, Infusion Brewery. Local we brewery. We need them as a sponsor. Huh? Right? We need them as a sponsor. We should get them as a sponsor. Yeah. We'll tag them in some stuff. Even though Aaron mostly drinks Truly. Yeah, but out of local beer, this is definitely my favorite. So, yeah, And I it preach is local. So You do preach local. You do. You know. Yeah, go infusion. Actually, Cheers. I just heard that they Cheers. have a dill pickle beer. So you know me. I feel like I probably need to try that sometime soon. Yeah. But for now, vanilla bean will work. Dill pickle, who makes that? Infusion. infusion. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. they just, yeah. Hmm. So, I mean, dill pickles are my jam. Yeah. So if they had that and then you just top it off with a splash of ranch? Yeah, maybe like a Does ranch rim. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh. That. Oh. that is so gross. <laughs> Don't knock it till you try a it. Ranch rim? I mean, maybe like a ranch, ranch powder. powder. Yeah, 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 powder rim. yeah. I think it's so disgusting. A dill pickle beer would be good in the summer. Oh yeah, it'd yeah. probably make you swell though. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, if it's salty, like a, I yeah. mean, I'm sure they can make the flavor without the salt. But I'm not. I'm not so sure. It's but. so. I'm so bloaty. From you, can, <laughs> you can package it as like a post workout. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There we go. You got NBA Onto players something. drinking dill pickle beer on the side, especially LeBron. You know how he gets crampy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, back to Pleasantdale. Yep, Pleasantdale. So a lot of people, when I tell them that is where I'm from, they think um, I'm making it up or it's some sort of movie reference. But Pleasantdale, Nebraska, population 253 people, about wow. 15 minutes outside of Lincoln. West of Lincoln. Yep. Yeah. And you're you're a star softball player, right? I mean, star everything player, well, right? You have to but, be in a town like that. Yeah. No, well, I played softball <clears throat> for the majority. Like, softball was the sport I played the longest. So I think I started when I was seven and then played up until I was about 18. So, yeah, we were pretty we were pretty good. What was your team? You yeah, I, she's always quick to uh, – I feel like this is going to be the podcast where I just die Mary out constantly. <laughs> just, yeah, that's yeah, why, on, that's why we brought yeah, yeah, this is Yeah, so – but she always like she likes to talk about her glory years and how good they were at softball. Because we were really good. And I know. we were a small town team. Like you have a town of two hundred and fifty people. The fact that you can put some talent together that like makes it to state year after year. Did, Did you, you ever win state? Okay, you know, like that's not <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah. But, Never but won we it. made it to state. No, there was this team, the Batten Babes, that always beat us. From and, Seward? You know, yeah, Janae. Janae's yeah. team. Yeah. And so uh, Janae. I know. Is she gonna listen to this? Maybe she, I think she was listen. good, but it really was their pitcher, Karen, and she. What a Karen! Karen. Karen. Ooh, yeah, you don't want that name these days. Well, yeah, she was a threat back then. So Karen, the pitcher. Karen I don't know if I knew that part. Was she stout? No, no, tall and skinny. Hmm. And stout just could throw a meat. girthy. Most softball players aren't what you picture. You picture like I picture lesbians and stout. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I yeah, I don't know. I kind guess of. I'm stout a little bit, but. You? Yeah. Oh yeah. no, no, my not. God. No, you're not. You're not. <laughs> now this is a podcast where we're constantly reaffirming Aaron's please, image. Please, please. Yeah. Please tell me how skinny I am. <laughs> you're not fat. You're beautiful. I love you. You're so smart. Yeah, Aaron grew up on a farm, but like not, not really well, the stereotypical farm girl. It's not like they had cows and chickens and pigs. It is an acreage, like a farm acreage. There's like a barn on it. But Aaron's like afraid of grass and bugs, like I'm not afraid of grass. Terrible. I'm yes, afraid you are. what's in the grass, which are bugs. And uh, yeah, I don't like bugs. Like I don't think that's like No, nobody likes weird. bugs. Is that your biggest phobia is bugs? Um probably up there. What and, type of bug? Oh gosh, spiders. spiders. Like uh, I'm with you especially there. the I ones that are like big butts. Like 
big butt spiders. That's well, the ones that jump. Technical terminology. <laughs> they jump. I think they're pregnant when they have big butts. No, not no, these. Not these ones always have big yeah, butts. They're all or big like butts. the garden spiders, like the ones hanging between the tomato plants. Those, Those are huge. And they're big. They're like a silver dollar, maybe even bigger than that. They look like black widows or something. But so, yellow. Yeah. Yellow. No, yeah. I'm. I'm not. But in my defense, I also didn't grow up on the farm. Like I lived in town till I was in fourth grade. So. In town. In yes. town. Back in the 250, in the, and then they moved right outside of town. What's on Main Street? A bar, post office? Um, no, there's not on Main church. Street. There's two churches. Uh, there's the lumber yard, the post office, and that's it. And then you turn the corner, and there were two bars in the fire department in the American Legion. And then the rest were like houses. Yeah. yeah pretty basic stuff. Yeah. No <laughs> boutiques out there? No. You can't blink. Because you'll drive through. Yeah, like it's, for sure. It's a very, very small town right off the highway. I heard a rumor that there's a <clears throat> chance you might move back there. Um, that would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love um, just how I grew up, and I loved doing that and living that way. But nope, we're not going to live that way anymore. Hmm. Yeah, she's she likes all the conveniences of the big city living. You're kind of bougie now. Though. She is I'm not a little bougie. bougie. No, you I'm are not, bougie. No, I am yeah. not. Justin always makes fun of me because when we go out to dinner, like he he knows that I like to pick places based on like their vibe. Like, ooh, they got a good vibe. Let's ooh. go there. Yeah. Because to me, it's about an experience. It's not so much about what I'm eating or what I'm drinking. It's more about like I really like how I feel when I'm in this space. This is cool. Like, what kind of vibe does Romeo's put off? Uh, <laughs> no comment. I like Romeo's. Yeah. I do. If it's, it's a good place to go to with like our kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Like For those listening, it's my favorite restaurant. I'm super cheap and easy to please. Well, yeah. you guys oh. grew up with it. Yeah, we, we did. did. Like, mom would take us there on snow days. Like, that's when I think of Romeo's, that's how I think of it. I think Shout out to days. Romeo's. Bow, bow, bow. We should get them to sponsor and just have a four dip sit, sitting up here oh my well, gosh I don't know. The yeah. time. i'm not sure we'd get much talking done. we'd be <laughs> knuckle deep in cheese dip and bean dip the entire podcast yeah and then there might be some like gas happening yeah in the last but it's best so restaurant in omaha name it best restaurant yeah Ooh, i really like jay coco's yeah i'm like 50th and leavenworth it's one of my that. go-to's yeah um but truly i usually stay out west so like i really like pitch um I don't know. What else do we like? I don't know. Something I like sushi. everything. You like sushi. I do like sushi. Hero is the best sushi in town, if you ask me. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. You get good pieces of like sushi. Everything tastes really good. They have mm -hmm. a good vibe there. Yeah, all those places I named just have really good vibes. So <laughs> yeah. I, we also like to go to places like downtown Elkhorn. We live in Elkhorn, as you know. So yeah. support local. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Tell but, me about this uh Nickname McNasty. No, I saw that on <laughs> well, the note sheet. Yeah. It, it, yeah. That's not real? Well, you have to, no, you have preface. to preface, preface her, I mean, her main name is McNally. Oh, yeah. I so that, yeah. a lot of people might not know that. So yeah, McNasty was real. You know, I don't even know where, like, I know it was in restaurant days. I can't remember if it's when I worked at Carlos O'Kelly's or when I moved to Omaha and started working at Kona Grill. But I don't know, <laughs> like, those were just dumb days. It's a dumb nickname. I don't think I'm necessarily represent McNasty. Or McNaughty. Aaron McNaughty. Aaron McNasty. You can make Ooh. a Mick on anything. That's true. So, like, That's just true. put the word there. What do, I like, I would rather you tell people about your your childhood nickname. No. Yeah. <laughs> so this it was back to, it's not my childhood nickname. Well. When I was a sophomore in high school, me and my friend Cassie were driving a four-wheeler in a pasture at night. And I just started going a little too fast, ran into a barbed wire fence. Well, I flew into it and split my lip open on the barbed wire, and I have this nice little scar now. But anyway, so it's hard I, not to look at it. Yeah. When I <laughs> when I went to school the following Monday, I had stitches up the side of my face right here. And so my dear friend Nick, who had been my longest-standing friend, like since I was four up until years that old, point. Um, yeah, up until that point. Uh, called me catfish mcnally <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah Not like i wasn't flattering for a female yeah. especially no 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 so that didn't really stick it didn't get brought up that much but yeah that has been said catfish. that is probably my favorite nickname yeah you myself. tend to bring it up more than anyone else i know i do yeah catfish i don't know that McNally, what's up girl yeah that you know just stuck. I don't know if it stuck with me maybe not stuck with you but it always stuck with me the old yeah, catfish i don't typically think about it on an average no. day no yeah. i wouldn't think so I I have to get to this question. Oh gosh, Justin, 
why him? I mean, you look at the guy now, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, and he's my brother, so I should, you know, be for him and promote him. But at the time you guys started, he had bleached hair, yes, pierced ears, both of them, mm-hmm. pierced nipple. No, I never had piercing. No, I just threw that no out there. Just just <laughs> so, I actually had double, a double piercing in both lobes and a cartilage piercing. I got oh, you super, did? super infected. Do you remember how big the bump was on the back oh, of my I ear? I do. I do. I had it no. surgically removed. It was because it it got so pussy and hard Ew. that I you couldn't drain the pus. It was like a scar tissue at that point. So I had to like get it lanced off. It was so gross. Ugh. That's what happens. When you go to Claire's. Don't go to Claire's. <laughs> 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 and yeah, so that and then, you know, tattoos, just trying to be this bad boy, right? Yeah, I don't well, I mean, one, like it's an image. why Justin? I mean, you were a part of that. Hello. I'm, cu- I'm like, curious. I'm curious. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, Alex so. is the one that promoted me as much crap as he gives me. He's the one that like tried to force feed my name down down Aaron's throat. He wanted to he wanted her to date me. So I knew bad. you needed help. And you thought she was the remedy? But he was like, yeah. she is nice and wholesome. Yeah. She'd be perfect for my brother. I don't, yeah, girl. but obviously he didn't know you that well at that point, if he was thinking that. Because yeah. early 20s, we're all pretty wild. But in, in your defense, you didn't want to date Justin at first. No. You're like, hell no. You're like, Justin Pearson. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was super hunky and good looking. But. I, I don't think that was a part of my <laughs> hunky? reaction. Hunky? Hunky. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, or chunky. <laughs> I don't know, Justin. I mean, we were friends for two years before we started dating. Um, We worked together at Kona, and I just I had gotten to know him, and you know, we would we would hang out together like in groups, uh, but not even a ton. So not even he was so different from anyone I had ever dated. um, That in a good way, way. in a good way. I'm not gonna lie. I was very nervous to have him come home to meet my dad because of the earrings and the spiked up bleached hair and the tattoos. God, I miss my hair so much. <laughs> <laughs> Just talking about my, ble- even though it was bleached blonde highlighted it's tips, nostalgic, which is so isn't it? dumb now looking back on it. Gosh, I miss that Do you so know how much. long it took Justin to do his hair? Dude, you'd be in front of the mirror like one piece at a time. Just Perfection them. takes time. It doesn't, ha- it doesn't happen easily. You know, if you want to look good for the ladies, and I did, want to look good not yeah. that I actually did look good but it takes time yes I missed the hair but anyway yeah so anyway, I was a little nervous and you you kind of had this like skater boy style which I never rode a skateboard in my life yeah but I don't know I kind of dug it I guess I, I don't know I don't know why but skater boy I picture keychain to wallet to yeah. Louis yeah. belt he, he may have I've never if, had that he it may have been attached to his been. white skull belt that he wore with his white <laughs> that thing was loafer sweet. shoes. Like yeah. Yeah, I you know Did you ever the, pop your collar? Uh yeah, I'm when sure. it was when it was popular. I wasn't like the only one doing it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah I was all those pop. douches. Yeah. I was just talking about that too. You did it too. I saw you do it. Uh, maybe yeah, a couple yeah. times. You, we were not we were <laughs> birds of a feather fly together. Yeah. Man. You were you did I was it trying to be you. How yeah. foolish I yeah, was. Yeah, you were so dumb for doing wanting that. But yeah, I wonder sometimes what your dad w- thought of me. Just I, I can only imagine through his eyes what he saw in me, and it not not great. Like, yeah, what did Jim say? What, what were his first words? I don't even remember. I mean, my dad's so quiet. You know, my mm-hmm. dad. So I'm sure he's like, oh, he's he's fine if he yeah, makes he you hurt. happy. Yeah. You know, um, what was really going on? Like what my parents' conversation was after we left was probably a little different. Have they ever told you? Uh, No, but we've never asked. We'll just have to ask them. We should ask because I feel like one of my redeeming qualities might have been that I wanted to be a firefighter because I wasn't a firefighter yet at that time, but I was trying pretty hard. And Jim was on the volunteer fire for a long time. So he, you know, had that in his background. Sure. So I wonder if uh, that was like the one counter to the way I looked and maybe he liked talking to me. You know, maybe my yeah. personality shone through. I, I will it say, certainly was, wasn't your bar backing skills that <laughs> what, <laughs> that rubbed him in. I will say that, like Justin, he's such he's become such an easy addition to our family, and like he's just he's always the one that like keeps conversation flowing at the dinner table, and makes people laugh, and so. Oh, uh, we're like, getting off. No, soft I feel like now. you're the one that keeps conversation going. I'm the one that makes people laugh. Well, yeah, that's true. like I'm pretty that. okay sitting in silence, but I don't. I, you're not. I know. 
So especially in like all the dinner table, everybody's eating. Aaron would be like, so <laughs> what was everybody's favorite thing they did today? Yeah. <laughs> or I think that's what's a classic yeah. line that yeah. you say. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. something like that. Or like yeah. it'll be a Thanksgiving table and everyone's just eating. It's silent. So what's everyone thankful for? <laughs> yeah. you know, like, <laughs> I think those are good conversations they are to there. have. They are yeah. there. If I don't start them, then no one will. I know, so. but it's always you that it, does yeah, it. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, so what's everybody thinking right now? Yeah. I'm thinking, shut the hell up. No, I'm, just I'm thinking, I want to eat my dressing in peace. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And that's even, so like when I'm together with my girlfriends, a group of girls from Milford, you know, that I graduated high school with. Shout I'll, out to the Milford girls. Yeah, bum, bum, go bum. Eagles. Um, they, I, I'll be that person there too. We're like last summer when we rented that lake house out by Grand Island. I think the convert, the thing we threw out was, um, if if you were an animal, what would you be and why? So I mean, they can go from like funny to, yeah, like what's the deepest darkest secret you have? Ooh. Yeah. So, anyway. We getting an answer that. I'm one? deep. No. Mm-mm. We're avoiding that one. Today. All right. How about Do I even answer? know it? I don't know. I would have to think about it. Yeah. Ooh. I don't, if it's a I don't secret, maybe I nobody hear. knows. Yeah. I, I'm sure our deepest darkest <laughs> secrets, no one knows. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, not me. I, I'm a pretty open book. Are you? Oh yeah. I always. I've always been. Yeah. I've never really hidden anything. I can't, honestly, I can't think of anything. I believe, well, because like, you just tell story... it out, uh, or as, as it is. Like, huh? You don't hide anything. Well, like, and I feel like some of the best life stories are those ones that are super personal. True. Like, because everyone has those and can relate to them in some way, even though they might not be willing to tell them like I am. But I feel like some of the stories that people, especially on the fire department, like, oh, Justin, you got to tell the story because to some of the newer guys that have never, weren't around, do tell. There's no, there's a couple I'd rather not, okay. but maybe not with her in here. I can think, well, yeah, no, there's, whatever. Yeah, there's it's not a, like that. And I've probably heard but most there's, of them. There's some stories where, you know, like you have to tell this story, you know, and those are the ones that get the biggest laughs, but everyone's kind of has those, but you know, they don't, they're, they're not quite as open about them. But if I think back on those, man, we laugh nonstop about the, those. Oh yeah. You just have to be willing to like out yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm pretty, pretty vulnerable in that way. Like I, I'm okay just being the butt end of a joke. I'm pretty used to it. Yeah. So I, I think it runs in the Pearson family. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Too. I think I can think of a few stories for both of you. I will not out you. <laughs> but this might involve St. Louis. <laughs> no, that's when I would out. Yeah. But no. That would no. be. That's a good story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean it is. Let's just keep it at that. <laughs> let's just let's keep going. What's uh, what's next on the album? It, it involves here? you know, one year anniversary, blow my nose, booger on neck. I mean that's in the story. <laughs> and that's only half of it. But yeah, we won't that's go to only the half, other half the story. <laughs> yeah, that's, and that's pretty good. Uh, how would that happen? Who knows? <laughs> so we're going through some life changes, and one of them being potty training a four year old. Hmm. Mm. How do we yeah. feel about that? Where are we at on that? We are having some wins. We are having yes. some success. Yes. So Brody has been in big boy underwear for the last six, no, seven days. Today's day seven. So, and he hasn't had any accidents. That's minor. great. There was a minor accident yesterday. Well, I mean. We're unsure what, what exactly we, happened. We just call that a shirt. Yeah. Right? It, it might have been that. Yeah. He's not the age where he understands, I can't question this. Yeah, no, everything has to be on, sit on the toilet. You, yeah. No questioning. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, we're having wins. So That's good. Yeah, I feel like we have maybe, knock on wood, have finally turned the corner. As a bit. mom, is, has that been your biggest struggle? Um, it's been one of them for sure. Oh, yeah. Because you'll realize this when you become a parent, but Which well, one, silly. you have no idea what you're doing ever. And so everything's just kind of like live and learn. But also when you can't fix something <clears throat> and like just make it better, you just feel like totally helpless. Right. And kind of like a failure in the parent department. So oh, yeah. I feel like it was somewhere where we felt like we were failing big time. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Because the thing is, he's always been smart enough. It's never been about how smart he is. Like, he knows what he's doing, but you just can't change it. And there's nothing we can do to make it happen. Like, you can't it, – It's that is the most frustrating thing, is you, you can't do anything about it. Like you said, helpless. But I know I have reacted poorly, <laughs> so – uh, at times in, that, in those situations, but just hopefully get, we're just turning a pissed. corner. Hopefully. For the past probably like five giant boxes of baby wipes we've bought at Costco, I think the past five of them, Justin has been like, 
this is the last one. Yeah. <laughs> I can feel it. This is it. <laughs> this then, is it. This is the last, the last one we ever buy. And I think there's 900 wipes in that. And yes. I, I'm yeah. not kidding. Probably the last five at least. So. Yeah. Yep. That's true. This I've said it. that many times. Because Jack was what? Three? Three. three. We spent one right weekend around three. potty training him and he got it. I mean, he's typical firstborn. Hey yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah. Hey, at least, at least it didn't get awkward where he's like 10 and you're still wiping his ass. Oh, yeah. Well, we're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's not. Yeah, we've had one good week. Let's yeah, not count. Yeah, I'm not count counting that tip. out yet. I told you how he, you know, he was, we we're doing these naked weekends and he's naked. You know, we're just trying to, you know, when he feels that it. Clarification, he, Brody's naked. No one else is. No, yes. Brody, <laughs> it's a naked weekend. So that when, so that. Hey, everybody. Yeah. The idea is. That Pearson family's weird. Right. Well, you know, we're kind of weird. But. The idea is that when he's naked, you know, he'll instead, because he's not wearing a pull-up, he'll feel like he feels something. He won't want to just poop on the floor, so he'll tell us. I thought he would do that. But he comes up to me, and he hands me something. It's about the size of a dime. And he hands it to me. I'm like, what are we looking at here? And he goes, poop. (laughs) And I was like, it's in my hands. It's just this little like pebble thing, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And I smell it just to verify. And oh yeah, it's poop. He just handed me his poop. And uh, uh, those are you things. You belong in a zoo, yeah, Brody. Those that was one of my frustrating moments. Like that happened. He, I'm holding his poop in my hand. So yeah. the best poop Dad story of the year, right there, right? Oh. I mean, yeah, you know, he he grabbed the poop. The best poop story about That's Justin true. and Brody is when Brody was a baby, so he was still in diapers, weren't potty training yet, and like. When, when you're a parent, like as you're just running around, you're like, do I smell poop? And you just kind of pick up your kid and sniff their butt. Like you put yeah. your nose right in their butt, right? Just right up in there. And Justin did it. I wasn't home to witness it, but he's like, Aaron, I picked him up and I put my nose up to his butt. All of a sudden, I just feel something warm on my nose and I smell <laughs> this intense poop smell. And it had come out the back oh. of his diaper and it was all over Justin's nose. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah that, yeah, that happened. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> horrible. And I I learned a valuable lesson. You look before you smell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or at absolutely. least don't put your nose on it. Yeah. Yeah. Geez. Yeah. I, well, it was just right there, and you know, I just didn't even. It was just so automatic, you know, that I didn't even take him. Take yeah. Him. Oh my gosh. I was less than happy. They call that a blow up. No, blow I didn't blow, blow up. up. He was pretty blow little up. then, so I wasn't like. Oh, blow out. Blow out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a blow out. One of many. Yeah. You'll know. Yeah, you'll know soon. Four weeks. Four weeks. There's going to be blow out city up in here. Yeah. This is going to be real fun to watch. Real fun. So that's been a big struggle. Has there been any other big struggles as as a mom? I think as a mom, not to get, like, serious, but, like, you're constantly playing, like, the balance game, and especially as, like, a working mom. So I feel like we live in a society where – moms are supposed to be perfect mothers be really successful business women be the pinterest mom like be a great wife like not that that's changed a ton but like there's just so much like fakeness out there now where if you look on anyone on instagram or facebook like based on what you see them like they are doing it you know that's what the illusion is right and so when you are constantly falling short because you can't, no one can live up to that in all of those realms all no, the time. No, no. And so I feel like um, the biggest battle, honestly, with parenting is kind of internal and just like not beating yourself up and mm-hmm. realizing that it's just, it's a daily thing. Like no one knows what they're doing when you become a parent. And so just kind of working through day by day. Oh, I've, yeah. If you ever hear a parent say that they have things figured out, they're lying. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. I've heard that multiple times over the last few weeks, especially as we're getting up to our due date. Everyone's like, yeah, you just kind of wing it. Everybody's situation is different. Yeah. And every baby reacts and differently, sleeps differently. So you just kind of have to do what's best for your case. Yeah. You just do the best you can. That's always when people ask me about parenting. It's just like you just do the best you can because that's all you can do. Right. And, yeah, uh, it's because – Comparing yourself to others is a losing battle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you been getting constant baby advice now that like you're? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably from me. Unpr- but, no. Unprompted, <laughs> or are you asking? Um, a lot of unprompted. Yeah, yeah. I would say hmm. some asking, but you know, it's a lot of it's the same stuff as far as like get them in a sleep schedule. Well, we know that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, it's all been positive. You know, the good thing is a lot of our friends have had kids already, so we got a lot of baby clothes and yeah. stuff lined up, toys and what do you call those play things that they jump in? Bouncer? Bouncers, mm-hmm. things of that nature. Oh, pack and play. Oh, pack and oh, play. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I mean we're as ready as we're gonna be. But yeah, yeah. You well, think we, so. <clears throat> with that, we're gonna take a quick short break. Are you committing yourself to exercising in 2021? We can't help you keep your head out of the Cheetos bag, but we can help fix up your exercise equipment. Don't let your fitness equipment be the reason you don't hit your goals. Call Fitness Machine Technicians today. Fitness Machine Technicians repair and maintain all makes and models of fitness equipment. Some of our clients include hotels, apartments, gyms, corporate companies, assisted living, physical therapy, and let's not forget the homeowners. Fitness machine technicians keep your equipment fit to keep you fit. Give us a call at 402-871-4735. We're back with the brother side. We have Erin Pearson. We know her extremely well. I mean, very, she's my very sister-in-law well. and your wife. Yeah. Yep. So we were we, running out of guests, so we had to bring on a wife. Yeah. <laughs> hey, happy to help. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just what? kidding. You're, you're a valued member of our guests. Of our wolf pack? Yeah, of our wolf pack. Thanks. Sure. We, uh, Thanks. we were just discussing um, raising kids. One question I was going to ask is what's the most rewarding experience? Oh, man, it's like the little nuggets. Like, mm-hmm. the, like, like there's never, like, not never, but the, the big things are, like, few and far between. So, like, the kids will drive you nuts all day long. And then, like, they just say this, like, cute little something. And it's like, oh, okay, I forgive the last, like, 23 hours. Now right. now we're good, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, it, it, like, that's such a lame answer. But really, it's just, like, the little, little things yeah. that they don't even realize they're doing, probably. Like, maybe just, like, a, I love you or you're cool or something like that. You know, right. where you're like, okay. Yeah, like, yes, I still have it. It, like, fuels you for the next 24 hours until the next little thing happens. How about when they learn how to do something? I think of Jack. Yeah. Like, now that he's reading, I read with him the other night. I'm amazed at how fast he's progressed. Yeah. Just yeah. in childhood, you know, seemed like yesterday he couldn't even, he didn't pronounce the letters. Word. Yeah. And now he's reading books. It's I pretty mean, cool. And you also realize like how little you are involved in your childhood's like learning. Like he reads and it's like, I had nothing to do with that. You know? <laughs> yes, you, yeah. I mean, besides like reading at bedtime, but like we didn't teach him someone taught him and then we just like reinforced it right yeah yeah. and so because like you're the only one that teaches your kid up until they go to school right so like everything they know you did and then they go to school and they come home and it's like who are you yeah right how'd you learn this he's progressed at reading so much this year just wait till he brings home like calculus and you're like yep i'm out on oh man i'm out at like fourth grade math like that no it's like calculus yeah no you see here jack this is called google just google it Yeah, yeah exactly yeah google youtube buddy youtube and google that's right i think it's been super fun to watch jack step into sports and so yes. like you watched him last year at basketball yeah and i mean they were just like wild hens running over the court no no game plan whatsoever they didn't right. even really know what the purpose of basketball was sure and now they're he's i mean you got him and the other kids on his team they're like juking like throwing up fake sh- like you know faking pump, it and pump, stuff yeah, yeah where pump it's fakes. like what like what are you doing and i don't know it's super cool that is cool and yeah. we've decided we're the crazy parents at games at the six-year-old basketball games we're not yelling anything bad it's but we're like, just constantly but we yelling. we do yell a lot yeah like like fine. not yell um support encourage loudly. encourage yeah. Encourage, yeah. encourage you know like jack find your guy find your guy because he's he go just, turn it find just, your guy we say those comments yeah. under our breath right yeah yeah, it's just, yeah, it's frustrating to watch still. Like, when you can tell they're not giving all their effort, like, that is frustrating. But do you talk to them after the game at home? Like, hey, yes. come on, man. You oh, need yeah. to get, like, five more rebounds. Yeah, yeah. But like, You're hey, sick. We, well, we talk. You're sick. He's sick. No, we talk about just being just aggressive. Wait. Being aggressive and trying, giving it his That's all. what we say. Like, yeah. just try as hard as you try can as and have fun. Can. Those are the two, like, yeah. main things. Like, like, you don't want a kid out there just half-assing it. Like, when does that – because when do they start, like, figuring out that full-assing is what you're supposed to do if you don't say anything? Sure. Well, so, and he's tall. So, like, 
rebounding is completely foreign to him because he just puts up his arms, right? Yeah. And he, he can reach it over the other kid. So he has, like, no initiative when it comes to rebounding. So it's like, oh, get in there and go for the ball. But, I will say you're the only parents tracking stats at the game on a notepad. I was just like. <laughs> that is false. Oh, we Jack's were not. 12 <laughs> points, 10 boards, 3 assists. Jack, can we, can we just get one? Like, hey, we're after a triple-double here, buddy. Triple-double. Russell God. Westbrook, man. I will Come say they, he wasn't very motivated this last weekend, but we also didn't listen to his pump-up song. On the way to the game. What's his pump-up song? Thunder by ACDC. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Still going. That was my pump-up in middle school. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I introduced classic. that to it's him timeless. last year. Yeah. And he liked it. It stuck. Yeah, he likes that one. So it, it's kind of funny. So I guess that's on you for his performance. Yeah, because we didn't play it? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, that's probably on me. I'll How take about it. a little Space Jam? He'd probably like that. That's Brody's Yeah, Brody thing. loves Brody Space Jam. Brody loves Space Jam. Yeah. Big okay. Time. Well, yeah, maybe take it easy on him. He's six, so keep that in mind. What do you know? That's what losers say. What do you know? (laughs) We want a winner. That's what losers say. We're after wins. I'm going to be the same, but I'm having a daughter, so I don't know. You'll be just as competitor. I got to be softer. No, you don't. No. My dad coached me for all those years. And look how you turned out. I mean, no, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Maybe that was the issue. That was the issue. Jim didn't uh, harp on you enough. I'm just kidding. Sorry, Jim, if you're listening. Yeah, Jim with his Jim. flip phone. Sorry, Jim. Yeah, no, Jim doesn't have a cell phone. Jim. Oh, yeah. My dad is one of like the last remaining people on no this planet cell phone that at all. chooses not to have a cell phone. He could, they could watch through YouTube. I bet they might watch Maybe. this one. Maybe. We'll that see. is so funny. I forgot. Yeah, no cell phone. I can't imagine. Drives my mom nuts. Yeah, but he has a routine, so she knows where, yeah, where he's, he's like, at. Yeah, he's like, if I want to talk to anyone, I'll call them. Or yeah. they know where to find me. You know, yeah. all of like the isms that go right. along with that. Yeah, that's just a good old boy. You know, he is He's my dad. I love yeah. him. Love you, dad. But as he gets older, you know, out on his own, you start to worry about him. Like, oh man, he should have been home like half hour ago. Where is he? But you can't just text him or call him. Well, his argument is that we've gone how many years without cell phones? Right. I mean, that is his argument. Yeah. We went a long, a long time without cars too, but right. you know, they're pretty convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I agree. I agree. Well, I'm sure you could find Jim at the local watering hole, couldn't you? That'd be uh-huh. one of the options. The local watering hole has really turned into their patio. Him and my mom really, like, especially in well, the Well, the summer, bar like, in Pleasantdale's closed. Well, now. Well, yeah. I mean, that's just a cycle, a never-ending yeah. cycle. It open, is. Open, closed, it open, is. closed. Um, but, yeah, they've become – my mom has definitely become more of a drinker since all the kids left the house. Where, yeah. like, every day after work, like her and my dad. Shout like, out oh. to Wanda. <laughs> What's up, Wanda? <laughs> uh, they'll mow or work in the garden or whatever. Then it's like my mom has a margarita, my dad has a beer. They sit on the patio because they like the patio because no one can see them from the road, so they can close the garage door. So it looks like nobody's <laughs> home, huh? <laughs> so you don't get you know a small town like garage door is open. Oh, well, they're home. Swing Better by go... the McNallys. Yeah, and so, yeah. yeah, that's exactly how it is. Yep. And your mom will see somebody rolling up like, oh gosh, I don't feel like talking. <laughs> <laughs> she's kind of that way. She's the thing is she's so, so nice, nice, but she's like not. A, not a people person, but you'd never She's guess that. She's a people that. person. She just prefers like her alone time at yeah, home. Yeah, that's maybe the best. She's kind of like me where she likes to plan. So if it's like unplanned, like, what are you doing here? This wasn't part right, of the plan. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I have a margarita scheduled. Now you're ruining it. <laughs> yes, right. yes. So they kind of like a small network. Yes. Oh, oh look at that segue. segue. That, was, that yeah. was very, very oh, yeah, good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Man, you guys are really becoming natural at this. Yeah. That was, yeah. Well, you can well, tell we're natural based on the facial expression. <laughs> Man, no, oh my gosh, that segue was really good. Yeah, well, I wanted to be cheesy. Yeah, it was good. Because we, we got to get to the networking. We got to get into the networking. And it's a podcast. We just, we roll with it. So Aaron's the president of Centersphere. Presidente. The large networking platform in Omaha. Largest, yeah. probably. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can you tell our audience and our listeners of millions of people? Oof. Kind of what Center Sphere is, the mission of Center Sphere, how you got involved with it. Yeah, absolutely. So Center Sphere um, is really a plat- platform for growth um, in every sense of the word. So and connects uh, professionals to each other to grow their business, grow their connections, grow their network. And so um, it started about eleven years, actually eleven years in March. Uh, though we are not counting twenty twenty because. Lost year, right. It's yeah, lost basically. Year. So, um, but we're 11 years old in March and um, started here in Omaha. Uh, Brett, the CEO, him and three other guys met at a sandwich shop, um, decided they wanted to do networking a little differently. 
and um, Center Sphere was born. It was one of those things where they thought they could get a few people the next week to kind of join them. And I think you said the room had about 75 people in it. So then it was kind of like an oh crap moment of like, who, who's talking? What are we calling this thing? Yeah. Like, it just became real. Yeah, exactly. Um, but it's great. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's a way to do networking where people are able to keep their autonomy. They're not pulled by any quotas any which way or the other and it really is just about the relationship and about people sure so um i became involved back in 2015 uh my past career had me in mortgage lending and so i needed to um, get involved to build my own pop pipeline and start creating a network um so did that joined and became president actually justin and i were in mexico uh, with some friends and we landed back in the States oh, and my right. I chapter. Forgot. I forgot that's how that happened. <laughs> yeah, my chapter texted me. They had voted when I was gone and voted me in as the president of the chapter. So I, I deem it as she the wasn't most like... successful and cheapest campaign ever run because I, it took nothing. But yeah. anyway, so I said, You weren't yes, all that happy help. about it in the moment. Like, what the heck? I wasn't even there. Yeah. Like, how do I get voted president? Everything and I'm happens not there. for a reason. That's true. Did, were you up? to be voted for president or everyone's just like, hey, Aaron would be a good president. Yeah, it was kind of like that. Like, ah, oh, Aaron would be a good president. Cause no, had, no one else, no we, one else wanted it. Yeah, <laughs> no one, that's really, I mean, we were only five people. We were a really small group. And so right before I had left for, for Mexico, we had had the conversation of like, love you guys, but like, are we just a coffee club or like, are we gonna be intentional about this? Intentional. Intentional. That's one of our words. You're a thousand percent. Bow, 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 intentional. intentional. Hey. And that's our secret word. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, so then I came back, we grew the group. It definitely wasn't my effort. It was a whole collective effort, but it, um, I still deem it the best group in center sphere history. Uh, they're still, they're still working. Yeah. They're still grooving. Um, you visited my group. Yeah, I've, I was been, I've been times. Yeah. I've visited too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember you. I just remember Alex. Well, yeah. what the, well, what the hell? you're easy to forget. <laughs> yeah. No, Who's I'm, that guy over in the corner talking well, about CPR? Husband. He's boring. <laughs> <laughs> that guy sucks. How, so how many, when you were in Center Sphere, how many chapters were there? Gosh, uh, like when I was a member? Yeah. Locally, there's probably about 20 or so in Omaha. Um, and it was just Omaha at the time? Uh, uh, Omaha, Lincoln, Lincoln, and Des Moines. Okay. A smaller footprint in Lincoln and then just a couple chapters in Des Moines. And... Now I believe we are in 16 states. Wow. Um, we just signed Massachusetts the other day. Um, Give me a Boston lager. <laughs> that's that's exactly know. how they talk. That's, that that's exactly what they talk. Irish kind I of I don't know what it was. No, I, I think they're more like. There was a moment of silence because I just stared at Alex because I don't know what the hell that was. <laughs> Definitely wasn't no. a Boston accent. No, 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 that was not good. Um, so yeah, so I mean, it, to say we've grown exponentially is is great. And now we're at a time where coming off the pandemic and just everything with 2020, right? Like yeah. politics and, and the pandemic and just the crappiness of it all, yeah. you know, and the way it affected small business. Now is when people need a network. And so we're really here to like rally and support small business and just a ton of communities nationwide. We might be nationwide, but we're really focused on like local impact. Right. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things people could do during the pandemic was network as well, much as you could, mm -hmm. you know, via Zoom or, you know, I know that's changed your guys' platform. Do you see um, Center Sphere continuing to use Zoom as a platform or do you want to see people meet back in person all the time? You know, I think it's a hybrid thing. I think we'd be silly to walk away from something that has eliminated geographical boundaries and really brought everyone from Massachusetts to San Diego and brought them into the same quote unquote room. And so I don't, I think we'd be silly to walk away from those opportunities. However, we would also be silly to walk away from what we know works and is so effective. And there's just power in meeting in person. There is. Um, yeah, so yeah, we've time. already seen some groups in our communities where um, the restrictions are starting to lessen a little bit. Um, they're meeting back in person again, or at least maybe even just like a limited capacity where it's still safe, it's, but it's also really effective. And I mean, people are hungry for hugs. They're hungry for high fives, you know, like hug hungry. I, yeah. shook, I mm. shook somebody's hand yesterday at a one-to-one -one, and she's like, wow, you're shaking hands. I'm like, I mean, why not? Right. Did you sanitize right after it? <clears throat> I mean, with my tongue, it was like, yeah. no, I'm what? Sick. <laughs> That's Can you so imagine gross. somebody doing that out after just shaking their hand? They start licking their hand. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure you'd like walk away. Just, I'd be like, what a freak show. Yeah. Like, yeah. is it because 
I touch their hand and now they want to like maybe my they're hand. obsessed with me. Yeah, I don't think yeah. they. Yeah, I don't think they. They would think that it you're didn't, sanitizing. It your didn't hand. happen. Right. I know, but jeez, that's just disgusting. You're God. disgusting. So, anyways, how, um, when talking about the network, you guys track how many referrals, how much money's been passed. After 10 years, how much money has been through Ugh, the network? I knew you were going to ask me that question. It's a lot. Um, however, it's hard to like quantify because we're relying on members to actually track it, right? Yeah. So I will just say millions and millions of dollars. Um, That's like pretty ten, cool. Like tens of millions, if not hundreds. I mean, wow. it's, it's a lot. You know, when you have people, because it's all about doing business with people you trust. And it's not, like I always tell people, networking isn't about like us, right? Like, okay, so I know you, I know Justin. Okay, we're going to do business together. But networking is actually about the 500 people I know, the 500 people you know, and the 500 people Justin knows. So now our circle just got 1,500 large. Sure. No, not three. And so it's, it's amazing to see when you have people who have trusted connections, the amount of business that can get passed. Right. Um, and not that business matters, dollars matter, of course. It's what keeps you know the lights on. It's what keeps your business going. But really where we focus is like the relationship, the connection, knowing that the rest will follow. Sure. All right. That's one thing I've always known that you preached is like every time you talk about Centersphere, you always talk about the relationships because it is the relationships that make it work. Mm-hmm. Without the relationships, none of it, none of it happens. Because well, people want to, people want to trust the people that they're with, or yeah. that surround them. So it's easier to pass business to somebody that you know will treat that person right. For sure. Well, so, and who wants to get sold to? Like we've all yeah. been at that event where that guy is walking around, reaching inside his blazer pocket and handing out all of his cards. Right? Like, yeah. what's your name? Did that you, guy are you doesn't ask get me a business. Question? No, he doesn't. Like he's just like a. He enters a room, gets as much as he can get, and then walks out. There's no investment right. of like time or relationship there and i mean you don't see those people on the network because they don't last sure yeah every because everybody i mean they're fish out of water everybody sees it Mm -hmm. like it's pretty instant and i i don't do a lot of networking no you don't i don't but i have done some networking and it i've seen that in person and it's pretty obvious like what's happening because people some guy did that to me i'm like like you don't know. I'm a firefighter. Like you just hand me your business card, and I have no interest. Did in the it. business card have money on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, I may know that guy. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee he's not listening. But yeah. uh, <laughs> no comment. <clears throat> the uh, what, so there's a lot of networking companies. What would you say is a differentiating factor for Center Sphere? You know, all the things that I just described. You know, the the focus on relationship. Um, I also think that, you know, we also, with our membership, provide networking opportunities, of course, but we also, like I said, we're a platform for growth. So we really want to facilitate conversations and lead down different growth paths that might not be available in other um, organizations. So for example, um, we have nationwide collaboratives where people, members in the same industry can come together once a month and have, you know, industry specific com- conversations, overcome challenges together, like share perspective where it's like not a mastermind. Yeah, basically. Absolutely. Um, we also have center sphere Academy where people can focus on personal and professional development. They can focus on sales training. I mean, there's just a lot of ways that we can help facilitate being a lifelong learner because I mean, I think we're all of the understanding that if you stop learning, you're going to stop growing. Sure. And and then you become stagnant and then you become irrelevant. And so like it, we want to push our members and luckily our members are hungry for it anyway. I mean, we don't give them anything they're not asking for. Right. So, um, yeah, I would say that's one of the big differentiators. That's, I think that's really important. Um, bang for your buck too. Like you guys offer a lot of stuff and it's affordable compared it, it's to some super, other I mean, platforms. it's twenty nine ninety five a month. I don't know if you can get what we give anywhere for that price but it's with the members in mind yeah yeah trying to make it affordable so that people i mean they're not killing themselves trying to make it work like it it's financially makes sense and they get a lot for the what they're paying well the people that have to network aren't the ones sitting with you know two hundred thousand dollars in their bank account right they're the ones that are grinding trying to make it work they just open their doors they just change career paths like they're the ones that need it like why would we ever make it out of their reach right yeah, it doesn't make sense. I've had to describe your job to people before, and I have to des- then have to describe what networking is because firefighters yeah. and like people in my profession have no idea because I've never had to do that. But networking to me is always, you know, trying to pass that business in a, an affordable, 
affordable manner and creating those relationships and you know center spheres always had that in my in my opinion mm-hmm. i would like to hear you explain my job to people it's difficult give, give us your take aaron's job yeah uh, I don't know. I don't know. She, she like meets she, with people. She's at and home stuff. and she's on the computer a lot. She definitely talks on the phone a lot. Um, I, I'm not sure, honestly. It's a <laughs> networking company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That. It's easier just to say Centersphere. It's a networking company. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I honestly, when when I say these things, the eyes glaze over because they. <laughs> well, you're doing a horrible job then. Well, because it, they they're just saying it to be nice, like. They don't, you know, they kind of care, but yeah. not like care enough to me, for me to get in depth with it. Sure. You know, so as soon as I start like, it's a networking company and then, oh, what's networking? And then 10 seconds in, I see like this look <laughs> that, uh, huh? it just, they're just staring at me. They're not actually listening. Do you like it being referred to as a networking group or would you rather be referred as something else? I mean, it's something that people can relate to. Uh we like to get away from that because people have a preconceived notion of what networking is right. and we feel like we're so much different than that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it can be like a hook for people. And then they realize, oh, but you offer this, 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 and this. Wow, this isn't just networking. Right. We're the network. You are the network. Business You're the hub. Development. And now we're the hub. The yeah. hub. How'd you come up with that? The name? Yeah. Uh, Brett and I sat around like doing Google synonym searches for like an hour one day, trying to figure out what really? we wanted it to do or what we wanted it to be. And, and, and yeah. the hub is uh, changed because of the new website and the new app. Yep, it's our yeah. members only platform where they can go in, they have access to all members nationwide, they can track all of their activity, invite people to the network. Um, it's just really like the, the tech brain sure. of Center Sphere. So, and that rolled out at the beginning of the year. And the app is coming out app is shortly. coming out soon. Yes. Yes. Can we give a deadline on that? <laughs> I'm going to say soon. Yeah. 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 In yeah. the tech world, it's hard to provide deadlines. <laughs> yeah. It's. Yes. That has been one thing I've learned with this role. It was my big first like tech project on anything I've done in my career. Uh-huh. And it was also probably the biggest, hardest project I've ever done in my career. But the team we're working with is great. Um, they put up with me, thank God. So. Yeah. Well, that's that makes what two or three people justin's one of them and yeah. I mean, you guys I'm, haven't I'm kicked me fa- out of I'm your family fence, yet so yeah yeah, yeah. there's was, there's was a few hard weeks there <laughs> I, it's again we talked about being feeling helpless it was another situation where there's just nothing you could do like you just had to rely on your team because you don't have the background in order to develop websites and apps mm-hmm. so you just have to put it in their hands and hope that you know they're able to do everything you want them to do which they have up to this point it just maybe not at the same speed that you wanted to, but I think it's just, it's a complicated process. I think it's just a big, it's a big project. And so, yeah, it's you a know, huge and project, yeah. one thing that has been really evident and has stayed at the forefront in that um, development is what do our members want and what do they need? So like, it's my job to think about what they want and need before they even realize it. Right. Um, now, sometimes I'm a little slow on that, of course, like they're hello, where's yeah. this? But um, yeah, so as long as we're leading with that, I think it's going to be, it's a win. It, it's, it's a good win, the hub. Right. What's been the biggest struggle to grow the business nationwide? Man, 2020 hurt. Yeah. Um, we were set to grow um, January, February last year. We were clicking. And I even remember looking at Justin and just saying, like, it's happening. Like, yeah. Yeah. I do holy, remember that. Holy smokes. And um, March 12th. I mean, I remember the day so vividly and um, it just stopped. And what was really cool about the network is, yeah, maybe our new growth stopped, but really our retention remained. And it was a total affirmation of everything that like we say we are. It was an affirmation that we actually are that because our members leaned into each other. Right. Um, they didn't lean out. We were there to support local in every sense of the word, but it did put a hindrance on nas- on national growth for sure. But Are you starting to see things pick back up now that some of the mandates or, or restrictions are going away? Absolutely. Um, we <clears throat> are almost, if not already, to pre-COVID numbers. Oh, wow. Um, and it's great. I mean, no one really needs a network when times are good. If business is just coming in the door, yeah. who really needs a network? The best time for your network was 10 years ago. Right. Second best time is today. So I think people are realizing that and realizing I need to get creative in a cost effective way to be able to bring business in my doors. Sure. So not that the other ways aren't great. They absolutely are. But we can be one avenue that can provide provide that to people. I'm probably the worst member. 
I no way. I'm You're a great a, member. Well, I'm not in a chapter. I need to. I need to join a chapter. You don't need to. That's the great <clears throat> thing about Center no, Sphere. You no, don't have to be a part of it. I think I'd get more benefit if I did, because I just hop around and then I don't log anything onto the dashboard. Well, yeah, you should log on the hub. Yeah, I don't. I just track it like up here. I know who's, you know, referring me and doing business with me. That's how I track it. I don't track the dollars. Centers for members, please stop listening to Alex. Yeah. Yeah, please I, track that's it. A, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm the worst member. Well, think about it. You're I a mean, good member. From a business ownership standpoint, like, it would help them, your sister-in-law, yeah. a lot, you know, if you put in the numbers because it's easier to sell numbers, especially when you're growing, you're growing the business, you know, say – Texas is interested, some chapter in Texas. Hey, this is why. Look at all this business that's been referred. You should start a chapter. Yeah, if you're a Center Sphere member <laughs> listening, don't do what I do. Yeah, don't I mean, do <laughs> what Alex does. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's, I think you would have a lot of Center Sphere members saying you're a pretty bomb member. Like You're a good member. You did nothing but network last year. Yeah, but man, it's I was paid everywhere. dividends for you it, as yeah. you start your new business. Yeah, it you has. have tons of connections now. Yeah, and you introduced me to networking because – my previous life, I didn't really have to mm-hmm. as much. So it's been nice. At it's all. been good meeting a lot of different people mm-hmm. and having one-to-ones and going to meetings and just like knowing people in a grocery store. Like, hey, what's up, Dave? You know, it's like I wouldn't have done that before. It's like anything in life. I say this all the time. It, you get out of it what you put into it. Like yeah. if you put in the effort, you're going to get a lot out of mm-hmm. it. If you put in nothing, you're going to get nothing. And that goes for anything, really. The more you invest yourself into something, the more reward you're going to see. Yep. Sometimes not always good. Like parenting, like I've never, <laughs> Uh-oh. but I've never invested so much into anything other than like parent, you know, raising kids. That doesn't mean that everything they do is good. Right. Right. But the negative stuff affects me just as much as the positive because you're have so much into it. Yeah. Like it, affects everything you do negative and positive so it's a life lesson for you take that, that hey that, whoa. Take that. i yeah. know just i wasn't quite ready for that uh, no you you know every i want people to think that i'm as deep as a puddle uh, you know i got away from that <laughs> there i blacked out for a don't second don't worry you are very surface level like <laughs> yeah i will affirm that all day yeah. long. oh god that's what would you say is the coolest experience you've seen in center sphere since inception or since you've been there oh that's like, a good question like has there been someone who just like you know just started a business struggling big time and now they're just killing it because of center there's Street. a few really good stories i mean for sure like the nonprofit um stories think, that yeah. we have uh, it, it's just so cool to see members like rally behind our nonprofits and just totally support them and their mission so um countless of those i mean every single one of our nonprofits. it's cool we like we just our connecticut um a couple of our connecticut chapters just this last weekend in like you know how cold and snowy it's been up there did a food drive where they stood outside for hours like collecting food for the local food bank you know yeah. and promoting centers here and stuff like that those things are cool like it right. doesn't matter like if it's five hundred dollars or fifty thousand dollars it's just really cool so nonprofit stories are cool um you know, locally we have um, Michelle with the Omaha Bakery. She was one of our founding, founding members. And, I mean, she's been on the Food Network. She just opened her second location. Like, she's awesome. So it, her story is super awesome. We have a member in Lincoln who she started a new career within, like, the first three months. I think she closed 40000 and closed business from Center Sphere. Whoa. Like, I mean, it's those, it's those stories. What does she do? Um, magazine. She's a okay. publisher. Nice. And so um, – yeah, I mean, it's, it's the members' stories that, like, remind, like, Brett and I, this is why we do what we do. Yeah, right. Keep I mean, you driving. Because you know what it is. When you're when you're running an organization, like, people don't call you every day, all day, saying, like, you're Thanks, rock. you're great. You're like, so keep good. It up. Yeah. Like, you, you hear the negative, and you hear the complaints. And, Ten to I mean, one. Yeah, and That's luckily we don't have a ton. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, the ratio is huge. But you also have to remember that, like, that segment of – of anything, of any business, of anything, is usually the smallest segment. Oh, yeah. They're just loudest. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah. What's Center Square look like in five years? Ruling the world. Oh, Ruling yeah. the world. Is, would there be a plan to go international? Absolutely. We've already been contacted by a couple different countries. What? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, we're, like we're, their prime mis- ministers? Or yeah, like absolutely. Yeah. Their prime president? ministers, Aaron yeah. Pearson Like, there? hey, uh, we're really struggling with small business. I'm trying to think of like a prime minister. Well, Boris, me and Boris were. Boris Johnson yeah. from the UK. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. Right. Um, but I mean, for sure, all 50 states. 
Um, we're already, I mean, that's our goal by the end of this year. And so luckily we brought on someone to the corporate team over the past six Shout months. out to Ben. Yeah, go Ben. What up, ben? Um, and he's really focused on that and creating those strategic partnerships that are going to align with our values and mission and help us get there faster. Um, we're not into adding members, we're into multiplying members. And because that's the way we're going to make the greatest impact the fastest. So definitely all 50 states. Um, other than that, I would just, I would love it to just more stories, more success stories, you know, and just that I know I only hear a fraction of them. And so I don't know, just big more. footprint, big plans. Yeah, I, I think it's very possible at the pace you guys are going. Are there any burning things you want to get out there for our listeners? Remember, there's millions. Oh, <clears> there will be after this episode. Hey, oh, that, that kind of put me on the yeah. spot. Just the network. I mean, get out there and network with Center Shore. Boom, boom. Yeah, there you go. Drop mic. I'll let you guys, yeah. Well, this has been a great episode. This great is episode, episode 16 with my sister in law, Aaron Pearson. And my wife, Aaron Pearson. We'll see you next time on the brother side. Thanks.